Good evening, Resistance. Uh, it is great to be here today and to be preparing for the show for today. And uh, we have quite a lot to reveal to everyone that's here. And uh, I wanted to send wholeness and balanced vibration to everyone that's out there, everyone that's listening, Resistance members, and even just uh, the essence in itself of what the Resistance stands for, stands for that existence inside of everyone. Today, uh, tonight's show is actually going to be hosted interactive from the matrixunderground.com. That's www.matrixunderground.com. And we are here with you this evening, me and my co-host son. And I'll take this moment to allow son to let everyone know where he's at this evening. Yes, uh, we're here. Just, uh, on and, and ready to get this thing going. Okay, definitely the title of the show is, of course, Esoteric Radio, Real Masonry, The Parallel World, and Jehovah Jambulon. Definitely we've come a long way with a lot of things that's been put forward from the resistance, from information, and the angle of information. What's happening now is that it's time, as we continue to wake up to what is actually happening, it's time for us to voice what is happening as individuals who are of the highest intellect and have done their research and have not turned a blind eye towards anything that we found to be conflicting or dividing. So what tonight's show is definitely about is it's really it's going to begin, it's about masonry. It's about the cult of masonry and the idea of masonry, building and architecture. And it would be at this point for us to not cover masonry at all uh, not in our benefit since so much of what's in the esoteric world and secret societies and all that information stems back to it. So this will be more of the resistance, the resistance's perspective on masonry because, of course, there's what's thrown in front of everyone's face, which is sometimes just a smoke screen, and then there's what's really going on. So what we're only asking individuals to do is to be very patient with the information as it is all here on the matrixunderground.com. The information still within itself is a lot to digest, and this is actually a very long posting. So it will take some individuals some time to digest what exactly is written here, but also it's going to take time to get through it, and we don't have all the time to get through it today. We have an hour and a half with the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a few things, especially the beginning, and then I'm going to go into some stuff in a couple topics that are uh, talked about in here, but also I'm just going to talk about them openly and from another perspective rather than going by the guidelines that are written here. So once again, that's uh, www.thematrixunderground.com. And what you'll see when you first click there is you'll uh, go to that site, you'll see a picture of uh, some alumnus that are all in a circle together. And the quote under it says, Builders. And the question mark is behind that because one has to now ask themselves after, especially they hear the dissertation here and what I've uncovered and we've actually what we've uncovered, one has to ask themselves, are these builders by the original term of what masonry was or is this something entirely different? And, of course, my my opinion, uh, which I don't have time for, I just have only time for facts. So my fact is, is that this masonry that is here now is definitely different than the masonry that was here in the past. So this begins as the ancient builders took to the task of erecting the soul, and the modern builders, they make joys and clones. So once again, I'll say the ancient builders took the task of erecting the soul, and the modern builders, they make joys and clones. Because in the past, what masonry, which was which was tied heavily to alchemy and alchemists, was really about in all of the ancient books, nothing can be misconstrued to mean something, to mean something else. It was about building the mind from dirt, which was basically thinking that you know something and you really don't, and thinking you're a higher piece or on a higher level and you're really not. To gold, which was to graduate you into a level that was going to allow you to not even really think about any of that stuff. Basically, the thoughts that we sometimes have when we're uh, using the finite mind are nowhere in comparison to the thoughts that we'll have once we're removed from that finite mind. So, going forward, 
says here, there will still be only one truth, and that will be what really happened. If, some, if everyone was telling the truth, then everyone would be saying the same thing. And that's because there is such an inconsistency in information, some factions could not be bringing truth. Thus, there is a great need for the seeker to adapt some type of system to determine whether or not they are getting their time wasted. That system is the cipher, a way to decode life, allowing you to see the fractal in everything. That is what we, as the resistance, present. So what this is about is this about now people have no more time left to waste. And so a lot of people, they, uh, they say, well, there's a lot of truths. You know, there's a lot of different stories, but realistically there's only one truth. It began somewhere, something happened, things took place, and it may take a lot of time to actually uh, bring all the information of the truth out. But that truth does actually exist and should run along the lines of what exactly we're, what everyone is actually saying. So if that's not happening because there's all this confusion now with L, Al, N, On, Um, and the rest of the, all the deities that bring themselves forward and people are still trying to realize that there's no such thing as, as vowels in Kabbalah and the ancient languages and that they're actually worshiping all the same deities most of the time. But now there's also a distinction within the race itself where individuals that are looking at themselves as white and black when we show that the colors are entirely different, and I will explain that later, are also in their own quarrel. So this is really what's highlighting the esoteric world right now is that everyone's going to war with each other about whether Jesus is Horus and all of this stuff still playing like they can defend the gods and not gods are immortal and people are yet to understand immortality. So where we're at here is that there has to be some type of system in place, as I said before, the only way that things could really come together on a communal level is that all the teachers have to begin to approach each other and sit down and agree on something and agree where everyone is standing, and that way they can become real teachers to the people. Because what's happening now is everyone is so divided, people are divided between two people's concepts. But again, there's only one truth. So going forward, so the most interesting thing is that the more you know, the more you have to find out. This is totally opposite to what one thinks is going to happen when they delve into seeking and learn the meaning to everything, mainly our existence. People tend to approach spirituality when serious with an idea that they will eventually find God. Much further into it, you realize that, that the ignorance of, of what you're basically saying. And I don't need to read through this. I'm just going to skip through a couple of things here. But what I'm saying here is, is that when a person says, well, I'm going to go and find God, if you find anything close to a god, you're never going to be the same after that. Because the amount of energy that's transferred from a person or from a god to an individual, even in proximity, like if you came close to it, will forever alter your life just by what you see and what you feel at that moment. So basically, what I started to uncover here is, uh, I'm talking about here a couple of paragraphs down, I go, Personally, I've watched enough Star Wars to know the difference between a clone and a droid, but for those that see no sense in watching the Orion Wars of 6 versus 8, Saturn versus Satan versus Venus versus uh, Vesper and Lucifer, I will give you a brief synopsis of the two. Because really the whole Star Wars series in itself and the reason why it was put together, and of course George Lucas is known to be disappearing, and of course he's Lucas, and he makes the head character Luke Skywalker, so it's very obvious on what's going on. But, of course, people are still thinking it all doesn't connect. Generally, even if it didn't connect, these individuals change the name so they do connect. So that's exactly what you're dealing with. But in this series, in this story, you're, you're, the person is, again, introduced to the same thing that I showed happens in Conan, where they make two sides when they try to make like one is good and one is bad, the same Republican and Democrat situation. But just in choosing the side and saying, oh, that's the good guy, then the person has taken the side and they both have, that thus they have chosen the side. Now, of course, the side of the Jedi, et cetera, where they represented themselves by the symbol of eight, which is, of course, the whole cult of Isu and, and the rest of what goes on there. And then the Saturnalian side has represented itself as the number six, and that's allowing them to basically represent themselves as such as far as a Saturnalian dark side type of situation. However, what would definitely be known is that the full depth of what Sat is really about is really going to be expressed partially by the opposite faction anyway because they don't like them. And so they're going to say, well, these people practice in such a way. Just as when you look at a, a scenarios like uh, Christianity, then they do the same thing with uh, how they mark their symbols and, 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 and how they look at 
other uh, things that are in their affiliation, like the way Christians look at Lucifer, still not realizing that Lucifer and Luciferian is Christianity because it's an illuminated type state where one is supposed to go through something else in order to get to the top. And that is the same structure that doesn't allow one to turn on to the, who they really are, which is something that has to be done when one is facing directly with the Most High. Uh, I wanted to take a brief moment real quick to uh, to clear up a couple things and um, to also let everyone know, and actually some of them let everyone know the telephone number and exactly where we're located at. But if you can do that now, if you could tell them the telephone number and things. Yeah, it's one three four seven nine nine six five six eight eight. Again, that's area code three four seven nine nine six five six eight eight. And then when you call in, you just press one to uh, put your hand up. So we see area code seven five seven and area code two one six. If you have a question, just press one, put your hand up, and then we'll address it. So. Again, that's uh, 347-996-5688, excuse me, 347-996-5688. Okay, I'm forward. And so basically, uh, what I'm what's highlighting is, so what's going on basically in, in Star Wars is still some very good information to cipher if you're just trying to look into what is exactly going on on the spiritual realm with the individuals that have already trained themselves to embark on the spiritual world into the spiritual world. And, of course, Saturnalian and Luciferian type agendas are what the world is surrounded by when it's dealing with religion. So these are the people who are holding just definitely the Luciferian agenda is holding information themselves within the Vatican. And the Saturnalian agenda, which was also affiliated with the Luciferian agenda at times, had also taken that same information. And so this is information that you're not going to find on the Internet. You're not going to be able to Google this. This is information that is kept within codices that they only allow initiated individuals to study. And even at this point in society, they, those initiated individuals are not people who walk into masonry. And let me walk into the lodge. Let me explain this to you. The first thing is that if a person walks off the street into a lodge, they had to already develop a system that that person will go through that had nothing to do with real masonry. The reason why the lodge had to be there is just like a U.S. embassy. If a brother is in the country he, and he's in fear of his life, he can go into the lodge and they'll protect him with their lives. And that's why the lodge had to be everywhere. Masonry itself has been infiltrated a long time ago, and I will explain exactly how that happened and exactly the gender that is, uh, is serpentine. And but we also really want to highlight the what was really supposed to be going on, and that's why in this document itself, because a lot of people were looking at this and saying, okay, is this more of the conspiracy stuff, and we, are we, how are we going to get activated? Well, in this document, it is exactly one of the most powerful parts of activation, which is about the crystal and the stone, and that's why this uh, there's another ringing title around this post, which is called the sword and the stone, or the S tone seven, and the S. Seven, yeah. If I could mm-hmm. add in, could you could you try in uh or try could you give an example or what happened when this is the story that I remember of the Moors giving this information to uh, certain individuals that they keep it so that when we go under asleep or when we go to slavery that they have this information to then give back to us and the reason why I'm asking that is because you said that um, masonry has been infiltrated, so then that gives light to there was a point in time where it was uh, positive of nature or something to to do with the alchemy, like you just said, with that crystal inside. So, what 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 was the start of this thing, or the start of this uh, the transfer of the inf- of the information that actually started what are called masons? Well, what I what we really see is we really see in history that. When you take the, the knowledge of what masonry really is, which is about building the mind, and then you change that information to building buildings, building empires, controlling men, you cross over into another platform but use the same technique and ability. Like if you look at some of the geometric shapes behind actual buildings and how they're built are corresponding to the actual shapes that that are uh, being used in the sacred geometry and in churches and involved with spirituality. And so what we what we definitely saw in history was a hijacking 
of all real knowledge and then an infiltration by other organizations to get control of basically groups and networks of men that were working together. Now, in, it, notice when you see that situation going on in the Bible, when the God of the Bible decides that he's actually going to go and uh, destroy the Tower of Babel because man is in one accord and they're building this tower, and it says in the Bible, with this, they'll, they won't be able to accomplish they'll be able to accomplish everything if we don't stop them. So notice the automatically the personality of the, the God of the Bible will be at question if every time if when someone's working together and doing something and then it says, hey, let me go down there and confuse them. And then a couple of chapters or uh, uh, books later it says, I'm not the author of confusion. So apparently the book, just like everything else, uh, has a, either a deeper metaphor uh, and should be only taken that way or has been manipulated. It just it just so happens that in the case of the Bible, it has been both. Now, the agenda itself, because uh, the main goal for me, every single part of these factions, because there's not just one, but all these factions have one main goal, and that's to keep people asleep. Because realistically, if, if uh, 98% of the world is asleep, it doesn't really matter how many of the 2% actually wake up, or 3%, 4%, 5%, because there's still a whole 94, 96% of people to be used. And so what people need to understand is that money is the circulation of this planet. And, in, and the circulation is the currency. Or look at the terms that are being used. So when that currency is, is flowing and individuals have had to make that happen, there's been some dirty hands. And a part of that dirty hand that has to still come clean at some point, everyone has to be weighed against the feather. They're really talking about the next stage of those who are going to ascension, which is like the bird stage, as they were saying, which is where the pineal gland and these things are kept. But those that are weighed to see if they can achieve that find themselves not able to do that because they won't bring forth truth. So you have all these individuals that are sitting in their house. They know what's going on already because we found out what's going on through the cipher. So that's how we know what they know, but we didn't have to go in and get initiated. I'd say with many of the, uh, the ones that are, uh, or I'd like to conclude in this, in this uh, dissertation here that we're showing today on the, re the matrixunderground.com, is that realistically inside of each and every single one of us, when we come into this world from a womb, we've already been initiated. That's it. You come through it already. So if you have to do it again, you're almost being reset. Every baptism is a reset to where the person kind of forgets about their original origin and they take it on another one. And so that's what the symbolic uh, gestures mean when a person goes through these type of things like the Eucharist and the situation uh, and things of that nature. And so that's the, now when getting into the Moors, because of the information that's being released, it's most uh, – imperative for people to realize that really the Moors, who still also uh, sent into uh, uh, the assassins and uh, the Shashin, were really hired guns. They were always the ones that would go with the flow of, of whatever was going to hire them and pay them. And so thus through history, they did accumulate a large amount of wealth. They accumulated their own armies, Templars, Osmonds, different individuals, and they continue to push the agenda really for their own gain. I mean, the world cannot act like it hasn't been in the thrall of men in their pursuit of controlling this whole material plane, which even the demons laugh at because they realize man's end is still in the box, and if he doesn't do any graduating of his soul, then he still has the ultimate outcome of faith, and no one can be sure. And so the most boldest men at times in this type of state of thought are the bravest fools, they say. Because what happens is they go throughout life imagining that this life is just as exist just as just as it is. But the thing about this is is that every individual has is is uh, going to have a role. Either one will be appointed to them, or they can choose one. But everyone will have a role, and that's what it's about. With a sleeper, is a sleeper is being put into a role that is designed by that pit. It's designed by that 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 trap that allows a person to basically give up their life force and their life energy for the greater life force and life energy of another. Like if you look at some of the individuals, like the stars and things of that nature, as they call themselves, look how much energy they consume when a concert goes on and everyone's there and they're giving out their energy and their time to those five individuals. And that's normally the amount of people that are in those groups. But anyway, so that that's pretty much uh, what 
you know, what I what I see with uh, that. And, of course, the, as those factions are rising up again, especially in the esoteric world, bringing the same knowledge, honestly, that is within all these books because they're all using the same numbers. And that's what people need to start looking at. They need to start seeing the cross and, and, and counting the sides, and they need to start looking at the geometry, and they need to start seeing, you know, where the balance is in all of this. And what they will discover is, is that, first of all, when you look at anything in nature and you look at anything that's natural, it's not, it's not like the symmetrics that you see within things, even like sacred geometry. As I say that, you know, a square is, uh, is a straight, a way of the straight line expressing a circle. So this is another way of seeing things that is still not organic to us. Now, they did say that you can create anything with a circle and a straight line, but I do believe at this point that many individuals are forgetting the circle altogether and just sticking with a straight line for its ability to affect this dimension. So what we can also do just to kind of stay on that, that exact same topic is if people are on www.thematrixunderground.com, you can scroll down past, uh, I guess I didn't mention that, but if you know Obi- Obi-Wan Kenobi is, is actually another name for the Kenobis, which is uh, definitely one of the solar deities that have been worshipped and also even goes back to Egypt as the lion and the snake but all combined in the same body, still understanding a lot of the genetic things that have taken place, which is covered in this post. I would, uh, I can definitely say personally that I do kind of write a lot better than I talk on these shows and things. We're looking for a different format because I really want to do video because I feel like I'm on a monologue when I'm just talking to people across this microphone. And that's why we're going to have new things develop. We're going to be doing Ustream. We're going to have times for shows where you can just turn on the show and see the show live see what we're up to. We're going to bring you into where we are. We're going to start Manifestation Show, um, which is about how to manifest things into your life, it's especially the things that you that are exactly calibrated for you. I'm going to bring everyone in and show them how to activate and show them the energy. I believe that pretty much is my, um, is my role here, if you want to say that. And in that, I've learned a lot of things. Like if you scroll down, you'll see there's a, a block of information there called the Tumbling Cipher. And uh, I put this together in about two hours, and I was showing how there's, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of the words of the English language, which is over half. Um, and I show how all these, all 15 of these words and letters are in numbers. Well, actually, they're not all letters, so I guess there's some numbers in there, so I did some miscounting there. But these letters and numbers are basically all the same. And I was also uh commenting how I can really do this for the whole language, just to show how all the language just ties into itself. And the tumbling cipher does to me is basically no matter where you turn, you still will end up getting going to the same source. And, and what I what I uh, I explained it well here and I'll just start reading that one paragraph above the tumbling cipher. I say as I begin as I became more and more proficient at the code and the cipher technique, a major thing became apparent. We, as English-speaking people, are dealing with what I call a tumbling cipher. The best way to explain this is actually through large companies. If you go to the store and, and buy Clorox bleach produced by their factory, it is highly likely that the store label brand comes from the same factory. So if you do not want to patronize Clorox for whatever reason and you decide to buy the store brand instead, you still do it by a comp, you still did not accomplish not patronizing the Clorox factory. If they set themselves up so you cannot avoid them, then there is really no choices. This is how English is. Most of it is basically the same thing. So, and I'll also repeat this again because there's another point to bring bring up, if they have set themselves up so that you cannot avoid them, then you have to go through them. And what I mean by going through them is confronting, And because if someone's standing in my way and I have somewhere to get and they're in my way, I'm going to just go right through them. That's how determined I am to get where I need to go. So what most individuals do, they shine and try to take a detour, and that detour, or they call that a lamb on the path, that lamb takes so much time, sometimes lifetimes, because you took a lamb on something that you could have just walked right through and questioned it and approached it. Like I said, the situation that's going on here with the reptilian is off the chain. It's amazing at this point that no one's gotten together and just said, look, we need to just really clear this up. What is really going on? Because we have to know at this point. Instead of saying, oh, I miss the enemy and not understanding anything beyond that or where did the enemy come from, how did it get here, et cetera, et cetera. 
So, or is, is it really the enemy, or, or, or is, there, is it all of them, or is it some of them? Is, are they on a hive mind, uh, or, 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 or is some of them individual? Are they hybrids where they're part human, part? So the, all those questions have to be answered, but normally when individuals go to and answer those questions, it's in 300 pages. And by the end of the book, you don't know if they actually said they exist now or what, because they never address it directly. Same thing with the pentagram. No one addresses the relationship between the pentagram directly, but really we can see it everywhere and that there's something heavily going on with it. So that's why the information that is produced here can be put in other places, and for the first time people will see things that they didn't see before. Um, so before um, before I can I get into the stones, because that's really where this is going on first, is we're going into the S tone and the stones and the power of the stones. Um, I want to let everyone know, if you're calling in for questions, you may want to go ahead and call in now and do it early, because um, really, because I put this here for everyone to still look over, and this is going to take some people days, some people maybe one day and all night, some people maybe weeks to decipher and look over, and I know that I'm not going to be able to get through this all day uh, in the time that we have, which is not all day then you can call them, you can ask your questions related to certain things that you see in here, or if you scroll through and you see something, or if you've been having something that you need to ask about, now is the time to ask it. Because what the most okay, important thing we have, is... Um, we, have, we, have a, we have an hour and a minute remaining, and 914 put their hand up. So I just I just wanted to cut you before you kept going. Do you want to um, cut you off? Do you want to um, take in uh, 914 or... Or did you want to finish yeah. that? No, let's take okay. let's take it. I mean. Okay, here we go. Nine one four, I'm gonna unmute you. You just uh, tell us your name and where you're from and then ask your question. Uh, uh, love and life to love and life to all. This is Tamani of course. Son seven peace oh, What's the sure. resonance actually? Um I noticed you guys were, were mentioning on the, the Moorish nation. Um, in my area, there's plenty. There, there's plenty. They're around everywhere. And um, what would be? Would you have any advice? Maybe you can give to people that are listening to maybe open their eyes a little bit. I've had debates. I mean, it's on and on. Well, I'm known around here in my area, at least, as somebody that's gonna at least question. You know, there's masons everywhere. I mean, it's like the cool thing around here. I mean, there's kids walking around with the logos. You, you saw the comment I put on uh, your listening to earlier today. I was walking on the street and I saw a, a lounge. And literally, it's called the Mason Lounge. Not lounge. Dazzled Mason's Lounge. And I was just like, what is going on here? It's everywhere. But we definitely well, see, and, 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 and that, that is the best infiltration because realistically, if you look at what masonry really stands for, and then it's just like with anything, if you see it being used for, if all, if one, at one moment it's being used to be the highest level of intellect and knowledge available to men at one point. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, you see the symbol at a strip club. You see <laughs> what happens. It's, it's, it's like the gig is up. It's, it, it, the infiltration is, is, is in play. It's like the same thing with Jesus. And that's why if people have to understand that we are responsible for continuing to create. Once something gets too deteriorated, it's like an old pair of shoes. You need to buy a new one. And we're perfectly able of creating, and that's exactly what, how we continue to create more and more existence, how we create more and more mind, thought, etc. But what's happening now is, is that People are, are it's, it's the bandwagon, but and of course a lot of this stuff has the essence that when you jump into it, you can't jump out of it so easy. It's almost like being gang related. Once you're in, you're kind of in for life regardless of if it was just like a childhood phase. So Ooh. the thing is, is that when, when I see what's happening, uh, now let's, let's just take the, let's take the word, ma, ma son. okay? Now ma, the other thing is ma son, so that everyone's cracked that, okay, who is ma? So then everyone, I mean, who, what is the brotherhood of Ma? And then so these, these words, this is a two-letter word, so you can't really miss this word too many times if you really understand what it means, meaning that once this word is so small, it's either Ma or it's Am. So the, only, the, the, the deeper you can go into it, you say, well, what, what else carries the, the word Am in it? And then you go into Amber, you go into America, and if you take those two alone, now, amber comes from trees. Now, what do you always see in the lore, especially Hollywood 
in, in all of this. You always see there's a tree related and there's something to do with the amber. Now, if you study amber, you'll know, find out that amber is the only other thing that it can conduct a form of electricity. You can rub amber against silk and it conducts electricity. And some of the first generators were made this way. But it just so happens that because man is a conductor of energy, he can take this into his body. So basically because amber is alive, the essence that comes from amber, why it generates electricity, gives the man the knowledge of the particular tree that's being used. This is now where, we, where people have to look at their esoteric knowledge and things like that and say, or their, their spirituality and say, well, but how does it work? Because if it can't be explained, it doesn't exist now. That's how vast the knowledge really is. But now the individuals that are jumping in there just like they jump into the church and they don't know anything about what's being go going on there, they're just sitting there because everyone else is a part of it, they're never going to obtain truth on this life run anyway until they're ready to actually seek truth. Then when you seek truth, whatever you're involved in, you're going to end up having, in, in the beginning, you'll probably end up having to walk away from anyway. Meaning that if you approach something and you're not in truth, first of all, you're asleep. And this is the, the difference with people in the know because they under, understand that if you're if you're not in the know, then you're asleep. There's only two stages. There's only either you're a zero or you're a one in a binary world. So most people are zeros. And as I, I just quoted earlier, I said you don't want to be a one in a world. I mean, you don't want to be a zero in a world in a world that ones exist. It doesn't mean that there's a lot of ones out here. It just means that if there's a one that exists, a one can always switch a zero, but a zero can't switch a one. And so this is the, the construct of building, if they want to give it that term, is, is to bring forth new information and, and show people that how things work and relate to what's really going on right now. Instead of arguing about things that are going on in the past, jumping on the bandwagon of things that you're not really doing any, any type of benefiting because you just want to be externalized. Like these individuals, they're looking for just the same as the person will try to drive around and see what club is jumping. They join the lodge to see if they can find more friends there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and this is the, this area. They're all they're younger. I'm 23 years of age myself. You know, um, all the area the, the children around here is 15 to 28. It's like the cool thing around, and, and a lot of them not to throw nationalities out there, but the majority of them are all Jamaican. Literally, like, this is the big thing in my area. Well, you know, here's the other thing. Like, the, the ones that are the easiest to fold under pressure at times are the ones that are becoming the most desperate. And I will definitely say right now that, you know, just as, just as a, uh, you know, I don't know what they really honestly plan on doing with the Brown Bomb or Obama and, you know, how, how deep it's really going to get, you know, with, this racial line that they're t continuing to draw. Like the esoteric world is now attempting to draw a racial line within itself because everyone is so confused. And that's what this, this show was really, is really about. And actually this post here, it's really not so much of the show. The show is, you know, just us doing us. But the post that was put together, which was put together in conjunction with the show, is to show the sheer plagiarization. Like there, there's, a, there's a part down here, and, and as I, I comment on here and I just say this. If... I don't know, if you take my origins, basically, if you take my origins, you take where I'm from, and then you give that to your children and you lie to them about where they're from. Now, let me, let me just explain this in a real text. If the Jew, or the, let, let's say if the Russian takes the Hebrew's culture and gives his, his children their culture, two people are confused. The Russian's child and the uh, the Hebrews child, and because these guys don't care about even their children, they sacrifice children. This is what we're in the midst of because that's the biggest division right now. The biggest division right now is between what we're not seeing in color, which is black and white. Right now, the only thing that human beings are not seeing in color, they're looking around everywhere, things are red, things are gold, things are purple, they're seeing all that, but when they look at each other, they see he's black, or they see he, she's white. They see this, but the interesting part is, is because the world's upside down and, and the sun, sun actually polarizes, when it shines, it polarizes, the real color of everyone is inverted. And I point it out here, and I put a, a picture of myself and a friend of mine, Eric, who's a, a Caucasian fellow of mine, and he's blue, I'm, I'm blue, he's green. And it, and it looks perfect, and then when you, when you see... What when people talk about when I get a high, into a higher state of consciousness and they look at another individual and they say, man, I saw light and I saw essence coming off, 
and uh, you know I saw the aura, but you can also see now you don't you don't only see the aura, you see the person, and then they're a different color. So it's really time for <laughs> for them to actually, uh, or for someone, and I guess that that task lays upon us, is for someone to come out and say, okay, here's what's happening. Now here I wrote something here that it is I just read it directly off the pages talking about Enoch. Because right now all the higher levels of teaching and those who have gone beyond, you know, who just wanting to go into a lodge or whatever, they're trying to figure out how to learn this Enochian magic and this Enochian language and the neighbor the language of hyperdimensional space, etc. And the most interesting thing, and this of course is being put out by mainly neo Nazi movement and crawling movement. Is, is I talk about here that it, it's, if the person scrolls down, and they're just going to, I'm just going to have to look at this later, but there's a two pictures of, uh, of Enoch down there. It's the Enoch that came from the original text that was the first book that was ever translated into English, and it was bought over to us by a gentleman, and i got to get his information. But what happened was is when he bought the information over, he also included pictures in the book of what was in the original book interpreted from the language, the original Enoch from the Enoch Ethiopian text and where he had taken the knowledge from. That individual was it was posted here and is of African American, or I wouldn't say African American, African American. He's of darker descent. But then the next thing is we get a picture of Enoch and he looks like Moses again. And that's the picture that's being po- uh, passed around the internet as this is all, this is Enoch. And so this hurts to people. This hurts the people that are not knowing what exactly they're getting themselves involved in and what uh, knock really is and how deep it really goes. And to the people who are just entering into it and thinking it's something totally different. And so now what comes is the sift. That's what we're doing. We're sifting the wheat from the chaff. Now what comes is the actual truth. It cuts like a sword. And then when the truth comes, the person has the time to determine what side they're going to be on or not. Now, don't be surprised, just like if you see the, you see the dimension now, with 98, 95% of the people have decided to serve mammon. So don't be surprised if you see that when the decision comes for them to make again, because they do know exactly what's happening, as we're revealing here in this post, that they don't just go choose to jump into it anyway. And then once they jump into it, that's the end of that. Because that's the, you, you can't, any time you go and dematerialize yourself, you immediately turn into what you would be lower than that. There's a shape-shifting process that takes place when a person goes into a more material, lower quadrant of their brain. And that process is, that, that shape-shifting is reptilian. It may not happen this lifetime, but in subsequent lifetimes when continue to degenerate, one will turn into that state. But then there's, there's two directions, always been two directions on this particular dimension, and individuals are now not thinking because they're asleep and they're just following the path of everyone, even though that path leads directly into darkness. Now, these are SARS. SARS, first of all, the word is Zor, Z-O-R. Now, Z is also a S, so Zor or Sor is, is where the sorcerer gets the, it has the source of his power and it's with the serpent. So this is what the difference is between a magician and a sorcerer. Now, notice the word magician is magi. That's M-A-G-I. So there you have ma again. So you have ma versus sor, and they're basically magicians that it's just as clear as good versus evil, heroes versus villains, etc., battling out on the spiritual plane as, as, as their demigods warring against one another. What is the idealism? <laughs> The idealism is so many things because everyone has now manifested their own mental idea of what they want to happen. You have different groups together, different factions, to the degree where they've created parallel worlds. And that's exactly what this is about. This post here is about what is going on in the parallel world and, and how, and, and there's, because there's multiple ones, for every planet that they describe to you, there's a parallel world that you, there's a, there's a, a corresponding you that exists on that world. And this is, when one is going into sleep and sees themselves doing different things, this is when they catch a glimpse of what they're doing on that world. The, the, the higher knowledge is how to gather yourself from all this, those worlds into one so that you can be whole again. Now, the V, they're about peace. They're about division. Or peace is really saying peas. Nothing but peas. Peas are really sixes when you turn them upside down. So there is a higher level of things that is going on, but you're, they're not going to get it going into the Masonic Lodge at one degree or even all the way up to 10, 12. 
it, because the weight on the pyramid is supposed to be heavy on the one that's on the bottom until the point that it crushes them into dust. Then they take that dust and they, if they want to, they eat it. <laughs> that's really the ideology of that version of masonry that's in place now, which is a serpentine version. The previous version of masonry came after a rebellion. This is also talked after, talked about after, uh, this is talked about in here. Basically, when being constructed and conscribed to build the pyramids. Now, who built the pyramids? There's so many different stories now. Everyone's looking around like, who built them? Now, first it was already known that the pyramids themselves were constructed by individuals who were, I guess we didn't turn the phone off in here, but we can't remember everything, but the pyramids were constructed by souls that they have bought back forward into this, back into this dimension. And so, all right, that's the thing that we stopped. So when they brought these souls back in this dimension and constructed them to work, that was what they had as the idea of masonry. Because they felt like those souls that they were bringing back in the dimension to work had karma to work off. And this is what, what a lot of the information is going to start to reveal later on, is that man, when constructed to build or when being a slave for whatever reason, whoever's fault it was, it's the understanding that it happened. There's something that needs to be read into it from there. Everything has a meaning on why it's happening. So anything, anytime like slavery is happening and one is being, being uh, instructed to, to work for free and to build something, then at that point they have the opportunity uh, to basically do one thing, endure. If we look at how things are really working right now and this time, we are being encouraged to just continue to endure and become stronger. But that, that was actually not in this time, but that was the past. Now we've become strong and it's now time to act. But originally how this started was the pyramids themselves are being constructed for certain purposes. Time, travel, mummifying and being able to reanimate those, those that were having those pyramids constructed, etc. The people that were constructing those pyramids were also of larger stature. It wasn't just the gods that they're depicting in those, those eco, the Egyptian glyphs and things like that and how they always depict them as big. The other people that were constructing the buildings were also large too. All, but in the hierarchy, and this is also where the term house, that terms like house Negro really came from, is also in that same hierarchy, what you had going on is you had individuals that were, I'm probably going to have to unplug this phone for a second because I think it's just going to continue to call. But I, it's like going into the movie theater with your phone on, you forget to turn it off. But anyway, the individuals that were con instructed to, con to, uh, to build these pyramids were set up in, in levels or layers. And those levels or layers were like the degree that one sees in masonry. And so there were individuals that you never saw the all-seeing eye, and that's why the pyramid never came down to the tesser, to the uh, to the trapezoid or tesseract. I mean, to the trapezoid on the bottom of it. But the thing is, is that they never saw who was on top. But there were some that were closer to the top, and they were constructed with the shape and observing, developing, etc., rather than quarrying, which was which is the root to the word quarantine. So when one is quarrying the stone, they're only they're only uh, uh, shaping it, but even the one who was querying the stone was noticing the shapes that were being used to build the pyramid because everything about the pyramid was built in harmonics to accomplish certain things. And so, if a person actually has the the shapes, which are a lot more powerful than people are giving credit for now, the shapes and the sounds that are associated with time travel and, and power, the person also inherits that. So right off the bat, you had a situation that wasn't going to continue for too long. You had slaves that were working on building something that was also in building it, giving them the ability to actually get into a different level of knowledge. And it even shown over time that because the soul that was inside these individuals, which were brought in the dimension unjustly, had still more essence to them, they became more powerful than after a while than the individuals that were actually bringing forth that, that were the original uh, people who bought the knowledge for. So basically you have the slave becoming more powerful than the master. Slave is more powerful than the master builder. So then because he's been working the quarry and the stone, the master builder has only been working the mind. So if the, if the slave is actually working his mind and his body, then he's going to be superior. So then there was the exodus, as they call it, where power was tested. And this is, these are all symbolic stories, but in the Moses and the, the, the Ramses thing, 
is Moses is, is testing his power against the serpent Ra. And in his book, he says he won. Now, that book has been passed around to everyone, and been, they're being told that. But the Arab book says something different. The Arab book says Ra never spent time here on Earth because Earth is like a fucking third world, excuse my language, to beings like Ra. So it only comes around at a certain times. And then when this being comes around, then everyone pretty much gets dealt out a bad piece of the pie because it's never happy. And you got people worshiping it. So this so is brother, the story of the story. Brother Tremaine, I'm going I'm to mute your, um, mute your phone, and um, Seven, as you, as you close, because I'm sure you've over-answered the question, but um, this is another question in the chat room, but I, I'm going to let you finish. Oh, okay, yeah, I did, uh, I did know the line was open, but I thought that maybe he, he had uh, just come off the line. But go ahead with that question in the chat room. Um, this is uh, Sister Roberta. She says, uh, when you gather yourself, when you gather yourselves from other worlds, is that the same as the Egyptian parts of the soul? And she said, Ka and Ba after it. I mean, the Egyptian terms for the Ka's and the Ba's, you know, because you can't take the, these exact words because there's different grades of the spirit, and that's what we're showing with the golem, the creation of golem, and the, the creation of Diamon, or the diamond body, which is, uh, which is like more of a four-part being rather than a two-part being. People scroll down, they'll also see, uh, they'll see a golem, with the Hebrew writing on his head, and that actually comes from Wikipedia. So you guys are admitting what they're involved in. So what happens is that if you want to consider the Khan, the Ba, the same thing as gathering your souls from other planets, that's to automatically under, to say that, hey, I'm a Ba. Now, from that point, you know what, you know, the each of these words mean something different. So a ka would mean a serpent. Anytime there's a K sound and a K and an A, that the ka is, 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 a, is means a serpent. Ba, um, which is, is the, the other root to Ab and, and Baphomet and things, is another type of spirit. And then Mer is, is known to be uh, uh, the energy that was being used in Egypt, which was like an emerald green type energy that they had gotten from somewhere. So basically the knowledge here in these worlds is so vast, and they also said that in, on, on Venus that they were crystal worshipping, reptilians on Venus and they had a special crystal in their possession and that was allowing them to be able to to control things as such. And the most interesting thing about this is when you look at the amethyst, which also contains that am or contains that ma, and then you you look at at one point amethyst was being sold for as much as diamonds until they start finding all these very large deposits in Brazil. But that stone in, in itself, which is dark purple, which is the correspondence to the crown chakra, there was a stone that was always being used. They had they had a, a whole tale of uh, 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 amethyst key and different things like that. And so I, I don't know if I kind of got a little bit off the topic, but what you're talking about is, is you can't, what I'm talking about is you can't really name what your souls are, but it is definitely like that where you start to gather yourself. More like on that Indiana Jones film when you see that hyper-terrestrial being start to gather itself within those skeletons of it that are there, those seven combine themselves or eight or whatever they are, combine themselves into one, that is scheduled to happen anyway because of the lineup. This is when the human being has his full ability to manifest. That's actually now, to tell everyone the truth. And that's what we're going to, that's why we're going to bring the cameras inside the house. We're going to, I'm going to bring everyone into my life personally in my last part of this phase before I get transcendental. And I'm going to show them exactly how it was done and exactly where we started. We started from nothing, zero. And then from that point, we use basic principles about keeping the mind and the body pure and about continuing to, to refine one's knowledge with things that we know that, that, are, that are sound and that are uh, capable of, of giving us the results that we want. But still under, understanding the results that we want have nothing to do with the material plane altogether because that's kind of setting the sights very low. So um, I, don't, I don't know if, uh, if I should just keep going on this, son. Is that, is, is that all? Is there another person online or... Because I, I do see some well, stuff that I do want to get into. Well, we do have uh, another individual in the chat room with with their hand up. So uh, this is area code seven five seven. I'm I'm going to unmute your phone. Just say your name and where you're from. Uh, yes, this is Brother Infinity from Norfolk, Virginia. Hello. Yes, brother, yes. we hear you. How you doing? All right. Nice to meet you, Brother Seven. Good to speak with you. 
Um, I had a question pertaining, I guess, a bit to the transition from the third to the fifth dimension because um, as a child I was someone who I would have very vivid dreams. And I mm-hmm. noticed as I uh, basically grew into adulthood, a lot of my dreaming, uh, it, it basically got to a point where it just became blank. Couldn't recall my dreams, and, and for quite a few years this, this, this went on. And as a child, I, could, I, I had a very vivid dreams. It's getting back to a point now where I, I find myself dreaming more, and it's also like that period where I'm just before I'm about to go to sleep, I start to notice the shapes and, and everything else starts to really form with that, you know, how you close your eyes. It's, it's never really darkness you're looking at. You know, if you sit there and concentrate on it, you'll start noticing things. Now, when I'm going about my everyday activities, I feel like at times, like, like almost like I'm, you know, I'm not even supposed to be walking. Like, I'm, I'm supposed to be floating right now. And, you know, I feel things like the, the, the image I see of myself, that not the physical image, the image that, that I have of myself in my mind is a completely different being, one full of colors, one full of, of, of different types of characteristics that is it's like I couldn't express here on this 3D physical plane. Now, as we make this transition over into the fifth dimension, what, I guess uh, what I'm getting at is uh, what will the trend, what will be uh, some of the more uh, noticeable characteristics? And, and because when we transition over, I, I have this feeling like, am I supposed to remain here on Earth or am I supposed to be going to another realm, another planet? I'm, 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 you know, I have a lot of understanding, but I'm still confused about a lot of things because I feel a well of energy building up in me, but I'm trying to figure out, all right, how is this energy supposed to unfold? But I, it, it seems like some things are just happening on their own now, and I'm just trying to grasp, get a better understanding of it. Okay. Well, yeah, you, you definitely asked about three questions there, so I'm going to address them, but not in order. <laughs> because No, no, it's, it's all right, brother. I mean, that's what we're here for. The thing is, is that um, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it a different, in a different order because I don't. I'm not going to get into the, to the difference between three and five and how I don't feel like those numbers are correct. First, I'm going to get into what's most important, which is what one should experience when they're making this transition into the higher plane, which is called it that. Because mm-hmm. you don't really want to set numbers about where you want to go because numbers are limited too. So if you say I'm going to fifth dimension, you end up in fifth dimension. You don't like it. You can't be mad because you have fifth dimension and how long you got to stay there. Not to mention. We got seven chakras, so that means we started off on seven dimension. But then they said that we had 12 originally, so that means we started off on 12. Now we're down to three. So, I, like I said, I, I can't really hold firm to these numbers, but we'll get into that in a moment. The main thing is that how first the transition starts to take place, the first thing you need to understand is that if your dreams start, when your dreams start to get cloudy from the time of your child, from the, from the time that you're a child, what happens is that your filters start to get dirty. The body is, you know, you can look at the body sometimes like a car. There's certain filters there, like a transmission filter, oil filter, air filter. These are also your organs. Your organs are your filter. They're supposed to be there to keep your sound perfect. And so what happens is and keep you sound. And so what you know, keep you like stone. You're supposed to be in, in, in tone or in tune. So what happens is, is that when you start to eat the different things that are always being already being offered, and everyone can just have to admit we've ate enough something or even one time eating the wrong thing and not getting cleaned out properly, like even Similac and all these different things that are being fed to the baby. So what happens is the body is in basic need of filtering. And until that point, all the dreams are kind of cloudy and sometimes can't even be seen altogether. So what generally happens when the transition starts to take place is that there's something that your body will start prompting you to do to get it cleaned out. This is one of the main parts. People think they're all going to do it with all mind all the time. I know I don't really need to do anything. Well, you already did something to mess it up, so you got to do something to fix it. That's just kind of how the mathematic equation works. So there's a there's wholesome uh, natural ways of doing things to get the body, the vehicle, back together so that the spirit can start to build itself again. And um, so after that takes place, what one generally experiences, the dreams become a lot more vivid. The synchronicities get a lot more stronger. All this is happening right now. There's no other time to wait. So what happens is, is as these synchronicities get stronger, you start to gravitate toward around exactly what you need to hear to put you in the know. Basically, in the know is a feeling. It's not so much as what you what, what someone tells you. Someone can tell a person one or two things sometimes that have always been puzzling them, and then they'll, they'll understand it at that point, and they're in the know because they know at that point there's no more time to waste. I know that I can attain this. 
I know that there's something mystical going on with the world. I want to take all my mystical experiences and sum them up into this one point and just, just let that equate to I'm about to get serious. And what serious means is that taking advantage of all these different things, like if a person goes out and, and buys themselves a $100 pair of shoes, an $80 pair of shoes, <laughs> they could have went and spent $20 on a large bar magnet or they could have went and spent, you know, you know, twenty nine ninety nine on the bottom of Iridium Rhodium or something like that or about $20 on the bottom of MMS. These same people will kind of say, well, man, you know, I don't have $20 to be spending like that. You know, this is like the same person that did buy those shoes, though. They immediately will find even this, what they like where the sorriest reason to say they can't get it because now this is where a person needs to be determined or they're not going to be making it anyway. Person needs to be, if they don't feel like they can get some stuff to help them clean out their body and they can't have too much pride, man, if I do, I need some stuff to clean out my body to get on the next level because that's what my, my, uh, my, my internal self and my connection with the creator was telling me. Then even if I had to stand out on the corner and, and hold my hand out until I got that to clean out my body, that's how bad you have to want it. Because that's the only thing that allows you to have the fuel to actually obtain it. It's like basically the whole thing, just like I was playing a gentleman that just got off the phone, is if you walked into the lodge, then you already weren't worthy of, of, of being in the lodge. They weren't going to tell you anything anyway because the lodge was inside of you. It's the same thing as with the church. It's like if you walked into the church, you kind of missed the main part of the scripture that Jesus was talking about, about there is no church that exists physically. It's all inside of you. So these same people are always, this flag is thrown on them by their own masters, and so they're always in confusion. But so the main thing is, is that now the next transformation that begins to happen is as you begin to weed out certain people, the agents, as I call them, they don't necessarily have the, the have it in them from a level of their intending to do. This is what you will always see. These people don't intend to be agents. They don't intend to impede your your way with their buffoonery. But the fact of the matter is, is that they do. They are used at any point in time to take you from into an emotional standpoint. All this is just uh, more things put into the wheel of your mind. Now, the wheel of the mind takes, they say, 22 days to turn. So just because you experienced a very distraught situation yesterday and you're happy again, doesn't mean in 22 days you're not going to go into a day where you may be distraught. Because of 22 days ago, something happened with a person taking your energy. So what basically happens is one has to get very serious about what they're making their primary environment around them about. Because realistically, if you can't ascend, then what can you do for anyone else anyway? It's just a hardcore fact that if we really understand the attention for what it really is and getting to the higher levels of things or just getting more into the fullness of life or what it's really all about, it's about being awake. Like, you can easily tell a person, look, you know what, in this segment of my life, I'm going to take, like, five years to really figure out what's going on because in this segment of my life right now, I'm seeing that this is one I should pay attention to. People need to see that you could spend 10 years, 15 years doing something, and that could have been 1980, and that's cool because we're here now. But I wouldn't go into the 2012 timeline, 2010 timeline, where we're right at right now, basically, with that same idea. It's like and for three years I could afford to leave everyone for a moment to see if what's really going to happen in 2012 I need to be prepared for. And then if it's not really no big deal, come back to everyone and be like, okay, I just wanted to make sure because in that case, in, with everyone saying what it's supposed to be and me looking at the world right now and reading the signs and the symbols, I think that I need to really be working on something else right now than standard life. And so the energy that also comes with this because there's a big part of this that a lot of people are missing with the activation. Activating means to be active. So that means that you actually have to do things. You actually have to go and start planting seeds. You, and the planting seeds is with the message. There's more than enough information. Everyone's welcome to take the information and give it to individuals, take the videos, give it to individuals, invite individuals to the site. That not only keeps the person awake because you have to have something to do while we're still in time and while you're still refining yourself, your own stone, you have to have something to do. And so while you go and do uh, um, uh, anything that may take your mind off of the ascension, why not at some point put your life to a, uh, to a level where everything that you're doing is about ascension? And here's what people need to understand about that. The Most High takes care of its own. It's alive. It's not dead. 
So the moment that a person starts showing that initiative and doing that, they link up with all sorts of people because this is the bridge. Some people think that their job is the bridge. It's like they're a bridge to the higher world. They may get into other people in the spotlight with other people if they do really well at the job. <laughs> That's not what's going to happen. If your in knowledge and information increases to a certain level where you're talking about and about what is the most important things here, then for people who are the most important, those are the ones that you're going to find yourself around. So there's a way of really reverse engineering uh, exactly what is causing everyone to fail and finding success in turning certain things around. And so lastly, third and fifth dimension, the human beings need to be already beyond this type of stuff. Like, again, the numbers are, you know, those are really low numbers. And when you just look at the, the fivefoldness of man, okay, well, we're not on fifth dimension because they say we're on third dimension. That's already been confirmed. So the 5D would, in essence, be uh, what they would say would be an upgrade or a perfected man. But then you won't have to look into the 7D and, and the other Ds that actually also exist, that they also confirm if there's a 12th dimension, et cetera. I noticed that I, yeah, because I find my level of thinking or what, the, what they speak on as far as the various dimensions, I say, well, my thought processes and the things I, I let float into my mind or the things I contemplate, don't, they don't seem to be within the realms of any specific boundaries. So I realize that, you know, I'm, flo I'm floating in a pool of infinite thought, so I, I really don't put any restrictions on my thought process. But when I have people telling me, oh, we're going from this to that, or, or you, you need to follow this route, I'm like, well, if I'm, if I'm flowing down this river, is there any set pattern? <laughs> you know, and that, those are the types of things that really run through my head. Like, even though I'm being told there are certain paths that, that, that are the best we should follow, I'm also going to myself, well, in my universe, there is no set pattern, <laughs> you know, and I don't know if it's just an individual thing for me or, you know. I, I, use, just, I, use that, I use that method in relation to certain things. Like, I don't put any limits on the most high, um, and I definitely use that in relation to that. But as far as the, the, when in a dimension there is certain patterns, you know, there's rules that can be bent and some that can even be broken, but at the same time, there are some, some rulers here. There's Cain, there's Khan, who Cain was a reed, you know, was used to measure. And so there's a certain still order of structure here so things don't get completely out of control like they really can if that order and structure is removed. And so that one of those things, that, like I said, it kind of breaks down to stuff like cleansing the body. It's like something that just like you ride around in your car, if you don't clean your car, you just never clean it. Like, eventually, what is it really going to look like and what's really going to happen to it? And how are other people going to perceive it? So that's like one of those basic things that doesn't even really fall into the line of rules anymore. It's like, this is the guideline that, as a baby in the matrix. And I also talk about in here that matrix actually means, um, make, uh, matrix is, means the womb. You know, a lot of them, like, it's mom's trick, and I think I was, I don't know if I got everyone started on that. <laughs> but, you know, it, the, the mediatrix, matrix, if you look it up in the old dictionary, it says a place where things are cultivated and the womb. So just from that extent alone, if you look at Earth and say, is this a, is this a womb? Yep. This is exactly a womb. And getting out of the matrix means leaving the womb. It means actually stop being a baby. Like everyone is still in the room, womb until they're actually awake. Awake is when everything is turned on, and then I can't even explain what's going to happen after that because every time I've seen it, there was so much awe going on. But the thing is, it's possible without going through all of the, the stuff that the individuals are describing that one has to go through. They lack the experience when they go through things uh, from the level of, uh, of the way that is pointed out in religion. The, the, the way that a person really gets the most connected, to me, after learning everything I, I, I've learned at this point, I realize that the best thing is to have a clear mind first. Because whatever information you're putting on it, into it, you're not going to be able to see deep into that information and get the real truth into it because you'll be on the surface because you can't think deep. And sure enough, the world mostly walks on the surface. These human beings, they walk on the surface. And so they think on the surface. But you got to learn to look deeper into things. Like when I show the picture of, you know, me and, you know, how I look blue and then the, my, uh, my friend and he looked green, I said, I think we need to start looking deeper into this because when we saw Avatar, the guy ran up on Avatar, me and some were trying to find the clip, but the guy ran up on uh, the, the camera, James Cameron guy that did the developer on Avatar, he ran up on him in the movie, or in the airport, or in the movie theater, one or two, I think he was actually in the airport or some type of meeting he was going to. Airport. And he asked him, he said, why are no? Why are there no uh, 
black people oh, in black the movie. Is, 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 like I, I'm still trying to find that clip. If you can get that clip to me, man, I need to find that clip again because I, I lost it. But he, they asked him, why are there no black people in your movie? He said, my black people are blue. So, because, you know, these are people in the know, so you can't answer, is James Cameron in the know? Of course he's in the know. Like, look what he made. Like, this, I'm showing here, Liar Cohen, he produced, he bought out, the, uh, he bought out Jay-Z, he bought out uh, the Beastie Boys, he bought out these types of individuals in, in, uh, so of course he's in the know, but his name is Liar Cohen, and that, that says he's a lying priest. He's a Cohen. And, you know, there's a whole dissertation here about that, which I think people will really enjoy to look, to see how the secretity holds into place. And the cipher itself holds in the place. And then once people understand how to use that themselves, then they're turned on to also another guideline, just another tool in your satchel to get you down the path. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your time and energy, my brothers. I definitely appreciate that. And I will keep on listening and keep on uh, taking in this good food that you all are feeding us during this time. Thank you, my brother. No doubt. Thank All right, you. All right, brother. Thank you for your thank you for your question. I'm gonna mute your phone and now we have another question in area code seven oh eight. Uh it's twenty one minutes left. Just a note. And uh seven oh eight I'm going to unmute your phone. Please just say your name, where you're from, and then ask your question. Hello. Seven oh eight? Yes. My name is Mike, uh calling from Chicago area. Uh, frequently visit Dr. Blair, so uh, I know Seven, he's a, a fan of Dr. Blair and his work, so uh, I want to thank him for putting that out there. But also, uh, just as the young man that was just talking about, uh, you know, the diet, one of the things I noticed over the last about two, probably six or seven years, I became a, a vegetarian, and then I started really, really getting into juice fasting. And I noticed that when... I started juice fasting, you know, for maybe 30, 40 days that uh, my understanding and my dreams and different things like that have became more vivid. And so I did a juice fast probably about uh, back ooh, in the summertime, and I'm coming up on another one here soon. Uh, I've been seeing this number, 717. And I'm just trying to get some uh, understanding about that, if you can help me with that. I mean, I, I always simplify numbers in, in, in six. <clears throat> what happened basically, I mean, I've, I've been seeing a lot of sixes myself um, from the other side. Like I was in a dream, and I just happened to look at some digital display, and it said 33 on the display. And uh, what this is really about is that, <laughs> you know, the, the, the faction of the – the Theosophical Society of Thule and Cthulhu. Their energy at this point is getting so strong because of, just like there, the gentleman that was just on the line three calls ago where he said, you know, all these kids are walking in these Masonic lodges and Masonic is like the cool thing to do and they just join. But it's like the same thing is that when you see a natural disaster and you see the Catholics and the priests show up first and they just, the first thing they really want to do is convert people while they're in that state of needing some help. So there's something else that's kind of going on on the other side where that energy is being used to do something. And the Saturnalian agenda is, is one of the biggest agendas here on the world because, if, again, the six and eight are, are coming to, to heads with each other and I don't know if they're going to end up joining each other or they're going to stay at odds or whatever. My thing is I'm telling everyone else is just forget about the whole thing. Like, to forget about it and just ascend on your own and leave, and leave, leave that level of information and that level of disturbance alone at this point because it's gotten out of control, the wars of Orion and Syria. And everyone has a little bit of this in them in their bloodline somewhere, so sometimes they feel attached to it and they feel like they feel very enthusiastic about hearing about it and, and getting, and even getting involved in it and joining sides and imagining one could win and that just keeps one here longer. And so basically, you know, that's really where, 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 where I'm at now. <clears throat> and, you know, I don't know if that, that answered your question. Yeah, I mean, for me, with the numbers, I mean, I see that number. Actually, that's my birth date as well. And I see well, what, well, what, 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 zip, what zip code, what zip code is uh, that? I mean, I, what area code is that, by the way? Have you checked with that? Uh, have have not checked with that, but I'll. I would definitely, I would, def I would definitely check that because I was going nuts because I kept seeing this number three one three all the time, seeing three one three, and it just had started happening for maybe about two months, and then it just, you know, for at that point it didn't, it didn't stop happening, and I was checking different things like uh, there's a planet that's called UB 
313 that's right underneath Earth, and they say that it's supposed to be like our parallel Earth. So I started thinking maybe I was getting transmissions from UB for a minute, but I didn't take that as, as like that was what was going on. But then as I began to, uh, well, I was talking to someone, and then I figured out it was the area called the Detroit now. I didn't I wasn't, I was born in Detroit, but I wasn't raised there, so it wasn't really at the top of my mind that it's the area code of where you was born. But it was that's what it literally traced back to. So, you know, I would I would check in it. Actually I have uh I have the computer up now, so I, w- I would check in at that. It's a uh that's actually the New York area or the Lancaster area. Um I don't know what I think it's actually no, it's central Pennsylvania, actually. I'm I'm looking at something totally different. But yeah, what what I would do is uh I would send me an email on the site and I can look through a couple things because I have some some charts and I don't really do the I do a number I do numbers from a different standpoint because this is what I'll I'll tell you about numbers. This is how numbers work. Basically, I did a clip that I wanted to put in here too and I just now remembered it. In this clip, it's from the movie Pi. And what the guy tells him on, on Pi, that the Kabbalist who, you know, the guy has been studying under, the guy tells him, look, this is how it works. If you concentrate on anything too hard, or if you concentrate on anything hard, there's no such thing as too hard. If you concentrate on anything really hard, you'll keep seeing it. You'll see it everywhere. You'll see it in everything because you can put it into everywhere. You can put it into anything because your mind can, can do that. It can sync up to certain things and, and, and it has that ability. And so, but one thing that he was mainly uh, mentioning with that is, is that when you can when you can figure out what it really means, and then you can and, and, and then you could uh, put it away and open okay. yourself up to something new. It's almost like you 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 graduate. You go from six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine. You just learn the main the main thing is to associate it with something and leave it associated with that. So, like, every time I see a certain number, I know exactly what associated with it, but that's my system. That system is very close to what numbers are supposed to mean because I want to do, I do want to keep it cohesive. Like, when I see eight, I have an association with, with wormholes, center of the earth, this type of situation going on. And so that's, and then when I see nine, I, 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 I think of uh, the An, I think of the Anunnaki, I think of what's going on over there and what energy they're sending out. And so that, but that's my particular guideline. And so that's all I could really uh, advise you to do is definitely email me. I can look through a couple of other things, and then I can uh, get maybe some more information from you, and we can figure it out. Because like uh, me and some were on the phone today, and we were talking about Tom Hanks, and he says, "So what do you think about Tom Hanks? You know, like we, we were talking about different actors and things like that that have been in the industry for a while." He said, "What do you think about Hanks?" And I said, "I, I did the, I did the." Uh, the, the cipher in my mind for a moment, and then I came out. I thought it was like snake. You know, I'm gonna go there for a the snake. But that is uh, that didn't seem to fit because I was missing a couple letters, and I was looking at my mind. But then I saw it. it, it, it it's cons, K H A N S, Tom cons basically. So knowing the cons of the priest, the king, Cain, Cohen, same thing. And so that's what I really mean about, about the cipher, right? Genghis okay. Khan and Aga Khan. These, these, uh, that's what I mean about the cipher is the cipher actually allows the individual to see truth within what they're looking at rather than having so much stuff and they don't know how to cipher it. The cipher gives like a filter. It allows you to take the knowledge that you're being given because you want to keep taking knowledge. You never want to say, I'm done. Like a lot of people get frustrated with that esoteric knowledge. Like I'm tired of listening to this. I'm just going to listen to myself. <laughs> they listen right. to themselves for a while and they're limited to the data that's within themselves until you get that portal open up. The portal is really what the activation is about. It's about opening up the mind to higher levels of communication. That way you don't really, you know when someone's lying or not, basically. When you start hearing them talk and then they start to explain things, if it doesn't all run into each other, like I'm, like the sentence here, you know, evil, uh, Levite, priest, unveiling uh, uh, the universe, lies. So all those words are anagrams for each other, so it is a way that things really do connect, and that's the system that's being restored. Okay. So real quick, what's the best mm-hmm. way to uh, reach you through the uh, resistance or? Definitely through the resistance and through the email box. You can send me an email through the resistance in the inbox, and uh, I can definitely get with you on that because I'm always interested. Because I, I really plan on by the you know by you know when I get ready to to do what I do next. You know as far as you know I don't know I see this getting to a really big level, but I really want to br- bring a large flow chart and show people how. This is all connected because I've connected so many synchronicities with names, 
places, people, birthdays, and things, but I want to put it all into uh, some format where people can see there's even less than three degrees of separation between everything, just like with the language. Okay. Well, I appreciate the knowledge, and I thank you very much, and I'm sure I'll be uh, emailing you soon. Okay, brother. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm going to mute your phone. Um, we have 12 minutes left. I also and wanted uh, everyone to know. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Ted. I was just going to tell them that uh, well, we, had, we were we going had, to do this. We had another question. We had another question, but if you want to. Well, I just wanted to let everyone dinner. know that we are we are going to do a Skype chat once a week um, where everyone could uh, basically come online uh, on Skype and ask questions. You don't even have to have a microphone. You can just install Skype. You can type your question, and I'll verbally answer that question in Skype, and we'll do that once a week so we can get a lot more of these questions answered in the proper space. And uh, I guess we can go ahead and take that call, son. Well, they're not on the line. It's, it's Roberta okay. again. And um, okay. she's asked this question, too. Uh, you mentioned a time when everyone on the right frequency will most likely activate anyway due to the environment. Can you elaborate on this? Will people yeah, sure. then begin to... Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, let's get into let's get into that. Let's get into the parallel world because a lot of what I'm talking about is written down here, and that's why I'd like to not to talk about it during the show. But basically what's happening is is that this is what's really going to going to be taking place during close, closer uh, as we get closer to 2012. Humans are going to figure out that they're going to they can manifest, they can turn energy into matter. Right around this time, they really want to schedule the alien event because there's always been aliens here. Like I talk about in this post, a meteorite is an alien. It's emitting another energy from a foreign area, and if you come in contact with it, that energy is going to get in your aura, and then you're going to have the same ideas as that stone along with your own ideas. So alien is in here. But the reason why they want to schedule the alien thing is to bring mankind together, because right now mankind is extremely divided. And this is the plan of the, you know, this is the plan of the great white brotherhood. And so what they want to do is they want to bring mankind together, but all under one power. And they, that's the UN, that's Maitreya. And they want it to have a spiritual thing to it because they want to sum up where everyone's spending all their time, like the Internet. They want you to go to one source for your spiritual power, one source for your money, one source for everything. And so, right around that time, because human beings are going to be able to manifest also, and they're going to start manifesting, those that, in, when the shift is taking place, as there's some information recording that there's going to be an eclipse of the sun. And I'm, I'm going to get the gentleman that had brought that information forward, actually on the show. I think he's going to be the first pe- person that we do an interview with. But um, in the, in, if, if this eclipse of the sun takes place, then the, he, from his, uh, from his uh, dissertation, he says that, then everyone, then people will realize that the stars had, had burned out a long time ago. But I take that as a hidden meaning to mean that then people will realize that everything that they've been worshiping has been gone. That it, you know, even if it was here and you could call on it at one point, the only thing that's re- you're really responsible for doing is to send yourself because that, that phase is basically over. And then he goes on to explain a few more things, but basically what we're really talking about here is we're talking about two directions again. We're talking about two worlds that, that are coming to in, close, in proximity to each other, which is the center of the earth and the surface. The center, because the earth is shaped as, as like a, if you look at the infinity of the eight, it's like two, two earths rather than one. So basically, what, what this is all about is this is about when this, this comes together, a person is going to have the opportunity to either one, manifest hell or manifest heaven. Heaven, not by that term, because heaven is a haven. Haven is a place where you keep, you know, darker beings. They are in haven, so look at look at the terms being used. But the idea of what heaven would be, person can manifest this within their mind. And all those who have that same idea, just like this reality is put together, go cohesive to another reality that is exactly structured like they want it. Basically, they understand that they are they had a reality already that they existed where everything went, was going well. This is very difficult to explain to individuals that are still in 3D how it is actually going to work. It's like, well, tell me how it's going to work. Well, it's the same way it works when you're about to come out of your body. All of a sudden, you feel like a vacuum. Then all of a sudden, you're transferred to another place. And then when you get there for a moment, you think that that place is really real unless you wake up into this one. But then you ask yourself, well, what is real? This is all existence in the mind. 
And I think I talked about it on the last interview, but if you give a person LSD and they don't know it, the real LSD, they immediately transfer themselves to another world, and they don't are not aware that they're still in this one. And so to everyone else, it looks like they've gone crazy, but they're already in another world already. And you cannot tell them that world that they're in does not exist because they're, they're there in it. You can't get them out of it. And so that's really uh, really what the, the big thing that's going on here is about soul transfer and it's about manifestation and about understanding the guidelines to that and, and not taking such a, a, a light. See, what ha- what's happening right now is what's going on, re- the same thing that's going on in religion. What's going on in religion right now is people are not believing in religion just like they're not believing in anyone else that's been telling them, hey, I'm going to do this and that for you, and then hasn't come through. People are not going for that. Their personalities are getting so uh, so bold and so uh, demanding. They want to know, look, don't lie to me. When, are you going to come for me or not? So I can figure out what I'm going to do. Like a woman, I guess, is a lot more better at doing this, and that's why I believe when women catch on to what's really happening, they're going to be some of the most powerful forces themselves because it's like, look, they'll tell a man in a moment, look, are you going to be able to help me or do I, can I, do I have to go? Do I have to go find something else because they are really blunt about what they want to have done? And so that's the same way that we're now having a post spirituality. It's like, look, are you are you coming to get me? If not, I need to figure out where I'm going to be going. Or, or, and and it, that, it, okay, so that's how it's supposed to happen. Can you explain it to me? Because I'm not as ignorant as I used to be. I don't need to just hear that I, I'm I'm going to be able to eat this and drink this, and then everything's going to be fine. Like, where am I going to go? Can I experience that now? I'm hearing that time is not is, is linear, and that there's no such thing as time. So does that mean that I'm in stages? So people have the intelligence now to ask these questions and what's going on is that while they're asking these questions to their God, a lot of people are not getting any answer because the God does not exist externally. The God let me, is, um let me cut in but, let me cut in. We have we have six minutes left and I wanted to just I want you to just go out on this because I think this will bring great closure. A boss lady, uh she asked, um and then I just want to add before I before I say the question we already pretty much answered that, like, things like masonry are about building yourself from within. So that's the positive aspect of it. So we definitely touched on it. But I know you came in late. So it says here, why is everything centered around negative forces? Where are the positive forces and all the deciphering for them? Positive forces are the trees. Positive forces don't say much. Because what happens is, is that, the pot, like, when you're really involved and really doing something, you're doing that. You're not just talking about doing it and asking about doing it and things like that. You're just doing that, and you don't really need anyone to, to confirm and to toot your horn and to put a crown on you and everything and say, yeah, they're doing that. Like I said, look at the trees. They're patient. They sit there. We can chop them down. They give us what we need to actually breathe. And the first best thing that you do to them is turn them into paper and spend them and burn more and cut more down. So basically the positive that exists within this dimension is within the person when they become in the know. And besides that, any type of positivity when a person is asleep is just something that's going to put them even further into sleep. Meaning that waking up means actually accepting what's going on here and doing something about it with your body. If you want to just hang out on earth and be in la-la land and just say, oh, you know, I'm going to just, you know, breathe in fresh air, breathe in life. There's nothing wrong with that. This is no different than a, a, per, a, a person. I've seen people sit on the porch all their lives in some country town and never want to leave the country town and feel in beautiful peace. And these are the sweetest people. There's nothing wrong with that. But what the resistance caters to is the resistance caters to people who need to be in the know and need to know what's going on and need to know what they're going to go into. They're dealing, dealing with life from a serious perspective rather than, than the fairy tale that does not exist. The serious perspective is actually looking and making a firm estimate of exactly where you are and what's going on. And from that, it takes it take, it take, uh, listening to certain things and knowing certain things that it's a little bit of surprise. Surprise is what seems negative. Honestly, all this stuff to me, I just look at it, I log it, I adjust myself according to what's supposed to be going on, and I, but I don't attach myself to exactly what I'm hearing so that it takes my attitude into some level of depression or some level of happiness. And that's what we were talking about with the whole emotion thing. What emotion does is it allows you to react before you actually think. It's like when you hear something, you should ponder it for a while. You should immediately judge it. Like, remember, a judge's only job is to decide between the case. His job is not to feel right or wrong or any, I mean, or bad or good about what is actually being presented. It's just to, the judge is there to just be fair. And so the fair part of this is that everyone needs to know exactly what's going on because 
they are a part of what's going on. And that's the other thing. Everyone has a responsibility to tell the people around them what's going on because they're the ones that are all, you have just as much to say about what's going on in this world as the elite because we all got to live in it together. And so when you voice that to the elite or the person that's not elite alike, they got to hear it. And if it just so happens to be, hey, if you keep running around here, sleep. See what happens when people keep sleeping for a prolonged period of time. It's bound to be something that happens. Now, what's happening good here? Well, the last good plan got foiled. That's really what we're looking at here. Look at the world now. It went into the New Age movement. Now it's supposed to be all their love, joy, and everything. They said they were going to get, come pick them up for extraterrestrials, and they were going to be here. They said they were going to be here already. But then people went into that, and they went into the secret and things like that. And then what did they gain them? Why? Because no one wanted to say what everyone else thought was negative. The secret people that always manifest negative, don't be around negative, it's going to cause bad karma. We're not around negative. We're not going to close our eyes to what exactly is happening because if I look at a baby in Gaza and then she's been burned and hurt because of bombs, and then I'm saying, well, that's negative. I'm not going to, for- I'm not going to focus on that. I need to focus on that so that I can relieve that if I'm in that position to be able to do that. And so that's really, that's really what this is about. The resistance is a different faction than what you would see at, in other organizations where they're really catered to um, more of like the, the whole environment, and that's why those those uh, inv- those uh, those portals also exist, and people can immerse themselves in both. That's what this really is. But people have to have, as you talked about today, son. People have to have the right, and, and the, what did you say? You have, they have to have the the, the way of choosing uh, or of something. It has to be available to them. Like if we don't have this faction of information of putting a person in the nose straight up. We don't have time to play with you and rock this is the womb, so everyone wants to be baby. Everyone doesn't want to hear that there's some growing pains that are going to take place here. But when we get into the, the moment of being able to accept things as they are, that's when we become the most powerful people. Well, we have, uh, I think she said 90 seconds left, 90 or 60, but it's, we should close out now and then play the music. Okay. All right, well, I just wanted to send everyone balance and wholeness and wholeness positive vibration, and definitely I want to thank everyone that is a member of the resistance and those that are listening for tuning in to us tonight. And I definitely want to encourage everyone to look over that post on www.matrixunderground.com so that, uh, because there's so much there talked about uh, that's not talked about, wasn't talked about here on the show. And uh, other than that, uh, I'll let Sun go ahead and take us out. All right. Wholeness and balance vibration to all.